Apple hasn't been doing too hot lately in the tech industry, and to be honest, it's fueled by the disappointingly boring flagships that Apple has released. To simplify that, Apple isn't producing completely original lineups. As an eager attempt to revive themselves and their place on the top, they released the iPhone 12 lineup, an highly anticipated lineup of phones that we had been waiting months for the specs to be released and to know more about it. And finally, with its arrival, here are the specs and everything you need to know about it. Let's start with the basics. The flagship lineup consists of the iPhone 12 mini, iPhone 12, iPhone 12 Pro, and the iPhone 12 Pro Max. They come in white, black, blue, gold, and a classic product red for the regular iPhone 12. It comes in 64GB, 128GB, and 256GB of internal storage models for $799, $899, and $999 respectively. Now as predicted, they all come with 5G and Face ID. Let's start with the basic iPhone 12, it has a 60Hz Super Retina XDR OLED display which is a major step up from the LCD panels used in the iPhone XR and 11. It's a pretty good sized phone, coming at 6.1 inches diagonally, it has a resolution of 1170 by 2532 which is approximately 460 ppi. It has a 19.5 by 9 aspect ratio and it's a light phone coming in at 164 grams. Just judging by these, you can tell it's a pretty nice device. It's a good fit for your hand and won't shatter too easily as it has 4 times more drop resistant ceramic infused glass, or as Apple calls it, ceramic shield. Obviously, it uses Apple's new chipset, specifically the A14 Bionic. The iPhone 12s have a hexa-core layout CPU and an Apple's custom metal GPU. Let's shift our focus onto the cameras. For the main camera, it has a 12 megapixel main camera, another 12 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, and a 12 megapixel front facing camera. All of the cameras can record in 4K at up to 60 frames per second and 1080p at up to 240 frames per second, except for the front facing camera, which records 1080p at 120 frames per second. HDR and Dolby Vision are recorded at 30 frames per second on all of the cameras. Now these cameras are disappointing, many previous flagships have set the bar higher for cameras, but Apple is sticking with what is basically the same camera setup from last year, just with added Dolby Vision. I really expected at least a slightly bigger camera sensor at the lowest. Sure it can record in 4K30 Dolby Vision, but I expected a bit more. Especially when most displays don't even support Dolby Vision, at least yeah, so you can't view it anywhere. The iPhone 12 has stereo speakers, obviously without the headphone jack. It has a 2850 mAh battery. The battery life on this is pretty bad though. They do have 20 watt fast charging, but Apple doesn't even ship the power brake with the phone anymore. Apple has finally introduced USB-C onto their iPhone cables. Oh what? It's on the other side of the cable? How am I even supposed to use this cable with my old charging brick then? Oh well, guess I gotta go pay Apple some more money for the USB-C charging brick. Saving the environment, am I right? Overall though, I was extremely disappointed in the battery life I was getting on this thing while on 5G networks and the poor decisions made by Apple doesn't make it any better. All companies have had phones with 3000 and 4000 mAh batteries and to see a 2850 mAh battery when they could have put in a bigger one was not the best. That's all for the iPhone 12, let's move on to the iPhone 12 mini. As the name suggests, the iPhone 12 mini is a smaller version of the iPhone 12. It's significantly smaller than all of the phones out on the market currently. Now, because it's smaller, it obviously weighs less. It weighs in at just 135 frames, coming in at 5.4 inches. It has a resolution of 1080 by 2340 pixels, which is approximately 476 pixels per inch, the highest of the iPhone bunch. It has a 19.5 by 9 aspect ratio. Again, it has the same ceramic shield and the specs are quite similar to the iPhone 12, which is how it's designed. It was advertised as basically a small version of the iPhone 12 and it even has the same A14 Bionic SSC found in the upper models. Now it's camera time and surprise surprise it has the same camera setup as the iPhone 12. Again, I really wanted more, but I guess it's fine since it's a small phone this time. It has a 2227 mAh battery, which is actually really bad, so don't expect much battery from this thing. It is compatible with 20 watt fast charging, but then again, you don't get the charger in the box. Let's move on to the phone we have all been waiting for, the iPhone 12 Pro. It's pretty much the same thing as the others, but with slight improvements. It's the same size as the 12 with a 6.1 inch display. 
It is certainly way smart, coming in at 189 grams, likely due to the more premium build materials being used here. It is pretty heavy actually, but certainly not anything you can't handle. It has a 60Hz Super Retina XDR OLED display with a resolution of 1170 by 2532, a 19.5x9 aspect ratio which has a PPI of 460, but this display can get 200 nits brighter than the regular iPhone's as displays. It can get up to 800 nits on demand compared to 600 nits on the regulars, but they can all go up to 1200 nits in HDR, which is good, but not too much of a big thing. And remember, this is a thousand dollar phone with 60 hertz, which really isn't great considering almost all Android phones in 2020 have at least 90 hertz and some even have 144 hertz AMOLEDs. Classic Apple. The battery life is the same as the iPhone 12 because it has the same size of battery. It has the same cameras as the iPhone 12, but this time with a 12 megapixel 2x telephoto lens, a lidar sensor, and the ability to record at 4K 60 Dolby Vision. For $999 at $200 more, more than the iPhone 12, you should probably not consider this phone unless 4K 60 Dolby Vision and a telephoto lens is a top priority for you, as it really doesn't offer that much more than the regular iPhone 12, unless you want to flex an unreasonably expensive phone, of course. All three of them have the same sensor size as the last year's phone. Are you serious? Come on, the same sensor isn't bad, but this is the Pro series. Other companies are making phones with much bigger sensors and for cheaper. The main cameras can record in 4K at up to 60 frames per second and 1080p at up to 240 frames per second. So they're all the same cameras as the iPhone 12. Also, if you didn't know this, Apple doesn't let you use the telephoto lens in dark conditions because of its poor light sensitivity. So you'll be just cropping into the main sensor when you zoom into the dark. This is to be one of the most disappointing phones of 2010. But the phone that's not as disappointing is the iPhone 12 Pro Max 5G. This is the phone that is actually meant to be awarded the Pro moniker. You see, this phone's main camera has a great advantage over the competition. It has the sensor shift image stabilization. What is that? You may ask. Sensor shift image stabilization is a way of image stabilization which shifts the sensor itself instead of the lens to stabilize footage while it's taking pictures and videos. It's a thing that has been only seen on high-end cameras yet, so it's an extremely great addition to the phone. This is the only phone of the lineup to have a larger sensor on the main and telephoto cameras. The phone has a 6.7 inch 60 hertz display with a resolution of 2778 by 1284, which accounts to 458 ppi, and it has a good 3687 million power size battery. Other than those major upsides, the phone is basically the same as the normal iPhone 12 Pro, and at $1099 for $100 more, it sleeps and bounds better than the regular 12 Pro. Something new this year is the addition of MagSafe. It's basically a magnetic ecosystem of things that attach to the back of your phone using a series of magnets. You also have a MagSafe charger that charges your phone. So basically, it's wired wireless charging, which is useful in some scenarios, but is less useful than others. I think we all know where Apple is going with this next year, though. If you haven't fi still figured it out, here's one word that says it all: portless. Also, maybe be careful with the Maxi Mallet. Seems like a bad idea to me. So overall, you can buy any phone. Maybe just stay away from the regular iPhone 12 Pro and that Maxi Mallet, as they're really not too great. So on that note, thanks a lot for watching, and we hope you guys liked the video. Make sure to smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and click the bell icon, and set the notifications to all to get notified whenever we upload a video. And share this video with people you know. We would really appreciate it if you do all that. As it will help us make more amazing content for you to enjoy. Again, thank you all for watching, and see you next time.